The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Let's get started. Um, what do you think are some important new concepts that we've been talking about in the last week? Make a list, Betsy. Okay. All right. Virtual work. Virtual work. Something else. on your list? Generalized forces. Okay. Grunge equations. That's a pretty good list. Any, now there's, we've talked about quite a few new things lately, so is there any, do you come in here today with any questions about something that's just, does, isn't sitting right? You know, on these topics or anything else, and I think write up a couple extra questions that we may be able to Cover them as we go along, Stephen. So when you solve the entire thing, you have everything in generalized coordinates, right? But say you want to plug in actual numbers, do you translate them to the English, or do you just? Hmm. Or do you just more for practical. So this is really how do you, so you come how do you use the equations you end up with in in practical yeah. situations? Okay. The I'm just going to answer this one. Yeah. So when you choose your generalized coordinates, you'll probably choose about the same ones you'd choose if you did the direct method. So if you did direct method, would you have the same, and got, court, got, got questions of motion, would you be asking the same question? Right? Okay, so it really, you want to choose coordinates that are going to be practically useful in the end. Okay. And so it shouldn't matter whether you're doing it by Lagrange or doing it by the direct method to get to them. You're going to use them the same way in the end. And in fact, how I, now the, we have two methods to get equations of motion now. When you're doing tough problems, complicated problems, I would always do it one way and use the other way to check it. I'd end up doing it both ways. And if it's really important, you do it both ways. And one will give you insight about the other. You know, yesterday I was in lecture, I was talking about does it make sense to have a, a um, Coriolis term in this equation? You know, would you expect it? You know, and that kind of common sense checking. All right, any other questions? Good question. Generalized coordinates or forces or anything. All right, let's get on. Let's keep working here. So I have an assignment for you. And it's here. This is a familiar problem that you've worked before by other methods. And you did, in fact, even find the kinetic and potential energies, I think, last week for this. So here's our cart with the rod, uniform rod. <coughs> no dash pot at the moment, and no, no external forces. The, uh, I'm going to give you coordinates to use. So here's our inertial system, deflection of the cart, x, rotation of the rod, theta. <coughs> We're going to break you into groups. Boy, we've got about. We got a big group here, big people. Five, 10, 15. Well, that's, we'll um, just do, I want to break you into three groups, kind of like five or six there, five or six there, and the same thing here, and one group each. So this group in the front left compute the kinetic energy of the system. And the group behind them, 
compute the potential in this group over here, come up with the velocity of g and v g dot v g, the velocity squared. Okay? And we're, this won't take you long because you've done this stuff before. And then when you get done, somebody from your group, just when you're done, come up and write it down. All right. Let's sort these out. Let's talk. So let's start with the velocity. We're going we're gonna to need the velocity to be able to write, to do the, to finish out the kinetic energy. So the, uh, the vector, right? And the, these, then you've broken it into two pieces. And since the others of you haven't worked on it, are you guys? Can you switch the sign and cosine? Ah, I was about to ask you about that. Good, I think that's, that's better. So this is sine, right? That's no, cosine. that's cosine. Oops, I just erased it. Okay, so that's cosine. Sine. Right, because we've got, this is your L theta dot piece, and you want it this way, and that's theta, so it should be sine theta j. Cosine theta i, yeah. Okay, I think that's good for the velocity, and then velocity squared, just the square of each of the square of each of the pieces, right? So we have V dot V, we need to put this into the kinetic energy expression, but we, let's, one at a time here, the potential energy expression, half kx squared, everybody f good with that? That looks like the spring kinetic, uh, spring potential energy, and M2G, a half L is the position on, of the center of mass, one minus cosine L, that times L, one minus cosine theta is the amount that it changes height from the reference. What's the reference position? What have you assumed for the reference position in this formulation? Yeah. Well, what is just down? So your reference position is ma center of mass when it's hanging straight down. Okay. Great. So there's your potential energy expression. That's pretty good. Kinetic energy expression. Uh, how do people, how, everybody comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. I'm not totally comfortable with it. Uh, let's let's come up. Let's talk about a minute about kinetic energy and say what's what can we use? What formulas can we use here for T? You know, there's totally general, and then we can narrow it down. Yeah. What do you suggest? For the kinetic energy, just the law flow, you can take. You have to take into account that it's not simply about its center mass. So you use the generalized formula one half. Um, omega dot, it's angular momentum has given point. Okay, so we have some general formulas, and let's just, just to kind of take a step-by-step -step approach to this. We have how many rigid bodies? Two. And what you compute the kinetic energy for each one individually. It's the safest way to go about this. So uh, I would stay away initially from doing this. You're lumping the two together. Okay, so I would take the two individually. So if you take the, the main mass, the big, the block on wheels, what is its velocity? Its velocity is just x dot, right? And its kinetic energy is? Okay, so for the first block, you have m1 x dot squared, and you're done. That's the first block. Now you need the second rigid body. So the second rigid body, you could... Uh, do, I mean, the full general expression is one half m to v g in O dot v g in O plus a half omega h, right, with respect to g. You get, you, Good with that, Vicente? Okay. Uh, 
No. You need transpose? You need a transpose. <laughs> okay. Good. All right. That's and you and is can we can we simplify that at all? You know, there, you know, is it, for example, is it ro that rod rotating about a fixed point? No, no. Uh, it's not. The, the point it rotates about moves, right? So you can't say it's just, uh, you can't use, for example, parallel axis theorem and just say it's one half i with respect to that point theta dot squared. Won't work. Can't use that one. Uh, you will find that if you work this out, you can say one half i with respect to g omega squared. And this problem will work out. It will come out to that because this is a planar motion problem and there's only one component of rotation. So this will work out to be uh, a half i with respect to zz of m2 with respect to g omega z squared, in this case theta dot squared. That's what this term will reduce to, but don't assume it just out of the box. And then you need this term, and that's why we need vg. So you need to do that, put that piece in over there. Okay, so uh, we have, so we need to, so what is i z z about g? For M2. For a rod. Slender rod? So M2 L squared over 12. That's what you need to put in here. We have an expression for V over there. And we, okay, we have everything we, we know everything now. Okay. So now let's apply our Lagrange equations. And I'm going to need to rearrange the board here a little bit. I'm going to need that board space. So our T is 1 half M1 X1 dot squared, or X dot squared, plus half m2 vg dot vg okay and now I can cover this up all right now so the next task is let's work out let's try our do our Lagrange trick equations work so how many generalized coordinates do we have and what are they? X and theta, right, that we've chosen. Two degrees of freedom, they're complete, independent, holonomic, and we can use Lagrange equations. We're going to come up with two equations of motion, and we're going to apply this, that's the Lagrange equation, we're going to apply it twice, where L is defined as T minus V. If you just plug in L into this expression and just expand it, you get, instead of two terms, you get four terms because you have these two guys. And this term, what can you, for mechanical systems, what can you say about this term generally? That's the derivative of V with respect to Q dots, to velocities. Well, why? No, it's just that you find that for mechanical systems, springs and gravity, you will never find that the potential energy is a function of time or velocity. It just isn't. And if it's not a function of velocity, you take a derivative with respect to velocity, you get zeros. So this, is, this goes to zero for mechanical systems. An exception for non-mechanical would be like a charged particle in a magnetic field. Then the forces get involved with velocity and so forth. It gets messy. Zero for mechanical systems. So we only really don't have to deal for, with three terms. That one, that one, and that one, and then on the right-hand side are generalized forces. So we're gonna, we, have, we can break into four smaller groups. Two groups are going to do the, the x equation. You have to take these group qj's, and this problem are q1 is 
x and q2 is theta. So we need, for the x equation, we need to do these derivatives. And for the theta equation, we need to do these computations. So we can, let's have one group A do these. And group B do these, and group C do these, and a D group do those. So break yourselves into four groups, and we'll do A, B, C here in the center, group here, four or five, four or five, or group here, the C group, and D group over here. Okay? Do these calculations and let's get our two equations of motion. And when you end up, when you get your stuff done, so the A group, when you finish, come up here and right here, write your stuff. And the B group, write your answer here. And the C group and the D group. As soon as you get it done, come up and put it down. Okay, we got this term, this term, this term, and this term. Okay. Did you guys check? Did you guys get a little time to... to B group to check on the A group? Which one was it? Who's checking on whom here? You're checking on it? What do you think? Okay. So, main mass acceleration, the, sec the, the second mass, its total acceleration, these pieces, and there's an acceleration that's Eulerian, and there's an acceleration that is, what's this term? related to? You expect it to come up? Right, okay. And then our Kx term, and all these are going to equal to the generalized forces, the non, any non-conservative forces. So you're okay with this one. Let's move on to this one then. Uh, who's the check group here? What do you think? I think they made this term. Pardon? You think there's a problem here? Um, there might be. All right. Um, can you give me an alternative? It may be that there, dt, d theta there, should be in the uh, time derivative. I take it with respect to theta. All right, so we need d, the, the derivative of this with respect to theta dot. The first term doesn't give you anything, right? The mx dot squared. The second, the third term gives you should give you an I Z Z G theta dot theta double dot eventually, right? So for sure, let's so this D by DT, the partial of T with respect to theta dot. So we just run through it. The first term gives us nothing. The second piece up there, the third piece gives us with respect to theta dot I Z Z theta dot, and no one wipes out the one half, the time derivative makes it theta double dot. So the third term is going to be an I, Z, Z, G, theta double dot. And it's the second term that needs a derivative of this with respect to theta dot. Okay? So both terms are going to yield some stuff, right? A lot of stuff. Okay. All right, I'm going to write down how this should work out rather than try to grind it out real time here. Mm. I Z Z. These are the terms that should appear. This is the piece about G. This is the, no, that's not quite right. That's the piece about G. This should be about, 
right? And then this term. That's how it actually should check out. Do you agree with me? Yeah, that looks okay. And then if we add to that the M2G L over 2 sine theta, which is our gravitational potential to energy, all of that added together ought to be equal to Q theta, right? So let's move on to looking at the generalized forces for this problem. So I don't know where you guys went wrong on this, but do you have any questions? You, 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 we can talk about this for a minute. What, what, get, what? Pardon? <coughs> D, T, D theta. So you got to take the partial derivative of this expression with respect to theta dot. This piece gives you a contribution, right? That will be I, Z, Z, theta dot. Then you take its time derivative. So that's pretty obvious why, why it gives you the first piece, right? Oh. Well, Where's your like second the second? Okay, then the second one, when you take the derivative of this expression with respect to this is t with respect to theta dot of this part, this expression, you get two times what's inside times the derivative of the inside with respect to uh, theta dot. And that'll give you another L over 2 <coughs> cosine theta. And I think you're done. So this times this stuff, right? 2 times this times the derivative of the inside, which is, well, the derivative of the inside with respect to theta dot should be L over 2 cosine theta. So you get an x dot plus L over 2 theta dot cosine theta. 2 times that times the derivative of the inside with respect to theta dot. This is the only term that contributes is that. And then you do the, we've already done the derivative of this with respect to theta dot. Wait a minute, we haven't. This one, now we've got another term here. So this one gives you 2 times the expression times the, the uh, This will give you theta dot L theta dot sine theta, but now you have to take the derivative with respect to theta dot, which gives you what? Another L over 2 sine theta. Comes out something like that. So you end up with a theta dot L over L squared over 2, L, theta dot L squared sine squared, and you probably get a theta dot L squared cosine squared over here, and those two add together to give you a theta dot L squared over a theta dot L squared, I guess. Those collapse together, and you end, that's, those come together to give you the other piece of this. Yeah, we got that term. It just messed up one of the coefficients, but where is the like, derivative of just respect to theta? Don't I have to do that? No, the derivative of respect to theta only comes in in the potential energy term. So what about this number two? Like, isn't that one just derivative Oh, OK. All right, yep, you need that. And so t with respect to theta, yeah, you have, do have to, and you do have theta pieces in there, and it does kick out more pieces. Yeah, so did you put that one in here? No, I didn't. I haven't even uh, done that piece that's yet. Really far, yeah. Okay, so you do that piece. A couple of things cancel, and you end up with. So rather than I don't have time to work it out to write it all up on the board, but the complete solution for this is posted. You know, so all the re the Professor Gossard, who teaches that three of the other three recitation sections. Uh, writes these up and posts the answers, and so they're on Stellar. So you get the, the gory details of each of these pieces, okay? Let's go on to uh,
talk about generalized forces while we have a few minutes. In this, the way it was set up, were there, what are the right-hand sides? Are there any general for, generalized external non-conservative forces, the way the problem was first posed? None. Okay, so let's put in a couple. Let's add a dash bot, B here, and an external force here, call it F1 of T. So now, what's Q, Qx and Q theta? We'll, uh, that's an exercise I think you can all go through, but just check with your groups. Figure out the generalized forces. And do it, you know, do it by imagining, as for this one, for the X equation, say, OK, you have a small virtual displacement, delta X. What's the virtual work that's done? Remember, delta W, then, will be uh, the thing you're looking for, delta X. And the same thing with, the, this is the theta one, I mean, the X one. And you get a similar X thing when you do the one for theta. It'll be Q theta, delta theta. Figure out the work done. And that'll tell you what Qx and Q theta are. So the total work of the non-conservative forces it's through these virtual displacements, you can just add them up. So there's a contribution that comes from a delta x, and there'll be another contribution from the delta theta. And we can figure out each piece. And you assign each piece to the equation it goes with. So what is the, if you do a small virtual deflection in the x direction, how much work is done? Somebody have to give me a term here. So work, remember, is f dot d dot dr. And this dr is a function of our delta x's and delta thetas and so forth. Yeah? f of d dx? Delta x, yeah, would be a, that'll be some work done. So the for, that force, external force moves through the full delta x, huh? OK, and what else? Minus uh, dx uh, delta x. OK, so that suggests then we have here, this is f1 of t in the positive i direction minus bx dot in the opposite direction times delta x is the virtual work done by as you do that. OK, now how about the delta theta? Somebody else here. How much virtual work is done by these forces F and minus BX? So the only non-conservative external forces in the problem are the dash pot and that F, whatever it is. How much work is done by those forces in a virtual displacement delta theta? Got a hand up back there? Zero. I hear a bid for zero. What do other people think? And do those forces move at all because you make a motion delta theta? Is there any dr here that results because of delta theta in the direction of any of these applied forces? At the point of application of these forces, do they move? So this force is right here. Does it move because you do a delta theta? Nope. And this force is applied right here. Does that point move because of delta theta? No. So and this problem, then this piece here, is 0 delta theta. And the total virtual work done is that. And you assign each piece to its appropriate equation. So Qx, this is Qx right here, delta x. Qx belongs up here. These sum of these things equals Qx. And in the second case, for the theta equation, it's equal to 0. So let's make it the problem a little bit harder for a second. Let's put a force, um, apply a horizontal force here. We'll call this F2. So now, what is the work done in this system? We now have an additional force. What's the, the, what's the, is there any work done because of delta x? This is the real, you understand this, this problem, this piece, then you're really beginning to understand how you do these generalized forces. Qx delta x, is there, is the, the generalized force 
associated with delta x, is it affected by this new force? Does there any work done? So I now cause this little delta x to happen. Does that force do any work? Assuming all, no other deflections are happen right now, right? Why? Is, so is there, yeah, it means it's, it's, not, it's not allowed to move. Whatever instantaneous position it's in, it's frozen there and in its coordinate. But if there's an x component, it, can, it moves in x. So it's angled like this off the cart, but now delta x does this to it. Does that force f do any work? How much? Okay, so then when you add that one to it, we end up with a, and it's in plus direction, and it's exactly in the same direction as delta x. There's no components. It's fully, it counts, the dot product of f2 is in the i direction dot delta x, which is also in the i. So you get an additional contribution of f2 delta x, and so now this generalized force has an F2 in it. How about the other direction, though? How about the, uh, this now Q theta, delta theta, what does it give you? So now, if you now freeze X and allow a slight angular variation, delta theta, does this guy do any work? Okay, how? How much? And is it, is it F2 delta theta? That's wrong in two ways. Dimensions are wrong. Something else is wrong. So let's draw it. Here's this thing. Here's F2. Delta theta causes a motion of this point in what direction? Kind of perpendicular to this, right? So you can think of it like this, and this would be L delta theta is the actual distance that it moves. Right? And so you can either say the component of that motion in the direction of the force, or you can say the component of the force in the direction of that motion. We want a dot product between this and that, and this is theta. So what is the component of L delta theta in the direction of the force? That's this right here. And that's now in the i hat dot f2 i. So our delta w in the theta direction is q theta delta theta equals my f2 l cosine theta delta theta. And to solve for q theta, now these can disappear. And Q theta is F2L cosine theta. Are the units right? What are the units of this generalized force? Meaning, go, you got to think about that equation. The theta equation, we talked about this before, has units of what? What are the dimensions of that, of a term that looks like that? This comes from, you do it the direct way, the summation of external Torque. torques. This is better have units of torque, right? Which is units of force times distance. So force times distance had better be the units of this, this equation, and therefore that had better be a torque. Is force times length a torque, have units of torque? Sure, so that's the correct unit. And over here, for the x equation, do we come out with the correct units? Yeah, comes out force. And this naturally works because delta theta is dimensionless, so the length, the dr, the, le the length piece that comes in here stays with this to give you a torque. Over here, delta x has length in it, and you're just left with the force. So you get a force, force x, this generalized force for the x direction is a force, the generalized force in the theta direction is a moment, a torque. All right, good. So we're officially done, but if you have any, you want any last questions on this, I'll stick around and we can chat about it.